We're chasing the light a bit today, friends. I hope that you don't mind. This is one of the problems of filming during the winter months. Today, I wanted to sit down and talk to you about the past year. It's a new year, and at the beginning of a new year, I like to sit down, reflect on the past 12 months, very briefly just recap on what those were like. Talk to you about some of my favorite things, things that I experienced, things that I read, my favorite board games, all of that. And also check in with myself to see if I did manage to stick to the resolutions that I set for myself last January. Next week, I'm gonna be uploading a video talking about my goals for 2020. But here I'm gonna be looking at goals from last year. I think it's really valuable to sit down and I'm not saying that we have to film a video about this, but to sit down and make a list of some of the things that we got up to last year. Especially valuable, I think, if you are self-employed, if you're freelance. It is all too easy to get lost in all the smaller projects and forget to step back and see hopefully the forward movement that you have made, even if that doesn't present itself in the form of finished things, which is what I also want to talk about a little bit in this video because it's something that I have been thinking about quite a lot. So firstly, I would like to talk about the goals that I set for myself last January. I set 10 main goals for myself. Number one was to get out more and do more weekend walks. My husband and I use a site called The Walking Club. I believe that you can use the site to meet up with people to go on walks, but that's not what we use it for. We use it for their maps. So they have a series of walks just outside of London that you can easily get to by train, mostly day walks, or half day walks and it's really really useful I'll leave a link to it down below we did go on weekend walks but I don't think that we did any new ones we just did old favorites we did new walks when we went on holiday but I don't think we did any new weekend walks so I'm going to give this a half tick because we could have done more number two was to stop scrolling I would probably give this a half tick to a little tick I did better, but I could improve. It's not even as if I spent great amounts of time on my phone, it was just, I would just keep on picking it up as a habit, a bad habit that I tried to break. So I turned off notifications on Voxer and WhatsApp. I mainly had my phone on silent in the evenings and at the weekends. If I was reading, I put it in a different room just so that I wasn't tempted to mindlessly go through things. Number three was to do more yoga, which I flat out failed at and I will address that more when I talk about my goals for 2020 next week. Number four was to cook more new recipes which we did do and also could have been better at. We definitely cooked lots of recipes from the green roasting tin and the quick roasting tin. Those were my favourite cookbooks of 2019. Number five was to make more time for board games. A very, uh, <laughs> very fun one. We definitely did this. We discovered lots of new board games in 2019 and I'm going to make a video talking about my favourites because we played so many new games in 2019. It was something that really Really helped with my mental health and my anxiety and plus it's just lots of fun. Number six was to buy less and when buying buy more ethically. I definitely did this, also could be better at it, definitely bought less last year and the things that I did buy were mainly from Luciniac and from Thought and from also a place called Jabba uh, and a company called Run and Fly. I'll link all of them in the description box down below. Number seven was to close caption all videos that I uploaded last year. And I did this, and I'm so pleased that I did this. I was able to do it primarily because of the support that comes in through Patreon. And if you enjoy watching my videos and would like to throw a dollar in the tip jar, that would be amazing. I'll leave a link down below. But basically the support over there allows me to invest time in making videos that are free for everybody. And also I made a conscious effort to make sure that all of the content I uploaded last year was as accessible as possible. So I have subtitled all of the videos that I uploaded last year, which was 85 videos. Um, so I'm really, really pleased that's something that I have stuck to and I will continue to stick to that as well. Number eight was to maintain freelance life. That got a big tick and I'll talk about that more in a second. Number nine was to finish the novel that I was writing. I did not do this. I did not do this. I'm gonna talk more about that in a second as well because I have thoughts, I have thoughts, we'll get onto it. Number 10, which I don't think I actually spoke about in the video, it was more a private thing that I wanted to do, but 
I don't mind sharing it now. Number 10 was uh, do grassroots work on disfigurement and writing, going into schools and liaising with charities. And I did this. I did a lot of events in schools last year. Some of them were tied up with my books. So Franklin's Flying Bookshop, which is the first of my children's books, is about acceptance. Invariably, I end up talking about that when I go into schools anyway, because kids notice that my hands are different and they ask questions, which is great. But as well as that being a side thing to going into talking about writing. It was also something I talked about more generally in schools and when I was doing events. And I did have conversations with organisations about how we can team up together and go into schools and talk about this more widely, which is something I hope will happen, if not in 2020, then going into 2021. So I'll speak about that more when it is a more concrete thing. So those were the 10 rough goals that I set for myself. I say rough goals, finish a novel sounds quite definite. We'll get onto that again in a second. But as for what happened in 2019, for me, I'm gonna quickly bullet point things so that we can whiz through them. Um, I had two books that were published in 2019, my eighth and ninth books, a poetry collection called The Girl Aquarium, which was published by Blood Axe in April. It was shortlisted for the Goodreads Poetry Book of the Year Award and the Books My Bag Poetry Book of the Year Award, which was lovely. Franklin and Luna and the Book of Fairy Tales was published in September. That's the third and probably final book in my Franklin and Luna series, which is illustrated by Katie Harnett and published by Thames and Hudson. Franklin's Flying Bookshop has also been translated now into lots of different languages. I think about 14. I'll link my website down below if there's a specific language that you would like to check up on. As I mentioned before, I went into lots of primary schools to talk to kids about writing and disfigurement and how to create create poems and that was just I think probably the loveliest part of my year but I also went into high schools and to universities to give lectures on a variety of different topics. I gave talks at book festivals all around the UK including Cardiff, Bradford and Edinburgh. Shillbottle Primary School in Annick dedicated their library to Franklin and Luna which made me so I can't actually articulate what I felt about it. I definitely cried. I still sometimes cry when I look at this video, which I'm gonna insert now because it was so touching and wonderful and lovely. I also went to Sweden on book tour, which was wonderful and made all the more wonderful by the fact that Mr. M was able to come with me. He's hardly ever able to come with me to things like that because obviously he has a job to go to himself. Um, but book tour can be paradoxically a lonely thing even though you're meeting so many people it's just a bit overwhelming and disorientating so having someone there with you who is a constant who you love um who you associate with home um makes everything lovely so that was just it that was also one of the highlights of my year in other areas of bookish life in 2019 i created 85 videos for this channel was the poetry book society's vlogger in residence and ran the book club for toast which is a clothing company they have a magazine i write bookish articles for them every month i also did my final year of judging for the somerset mom award if they ask you to do it, you do it for three years. And before that, I was a judge for the Costa Book Awards and the Forward Prizes for Poetry. So for the past four years, a third to half of each yearly reading has been taken up with books for those prizes. I have loved judging those prizes. I discovered so many books I probably never would have come across before. It's been an absolute joy. But there's also something quite exciting about going into 2020, knowing I'm gonna be able to read so many more books from my personal TBR and shelves than ever before. So yes, I'm looking forward to judging more prizes hopefully in the future, but for now, I am so ready for these shelves that you see behind me, so, so very ready. I accepted a freelance job with the BBC in 2019, talking about books every month on BBC Five Live. It's been so much fun and also a challenge. The main reason it's been a challenge is because the show in question, Must Reads, is on at midnight and I am often asleep at midnight and this show is live. I can't record it from the comfort of my bed. I have to go into the centre of town to go to the BBC studios and not just be awake, but hopefully sound vaguely intelligent and talk about books from midnight till 1am. I can't guarantee I've always achieved the sounding intelligent part, but I hope I sounded vaguely coherent. As I said, I have loved doing it and will continue to do it in 2020 as well. Let's go back to writing in 2019, because as I mentioned in my goals, I had said I wanted to finish writing a novel by the end of 2019. 
That was probably never going to happen, but I was in a panic and I thought if I said that, I would guilt trip myself into doing it. I would make myself do it. I don't know where I was gonna find the time to do it because I was doing lots of other things. But basically, I panicked. At the beginning of 2019, the last book that I had written at that point was Franklin and Luna and the Book of Fairy Tales. And I knew last January that was coming out in September. That meant I had no book scheduled for 2020. And I thought, I can't have a year where I don't have books coming out. Who does that? Answer, most authors all of the time. You do not need to have a book coming out every single year, but we as a society and me as an individual, we get swept up in this culture of valuing completed things and celebrating outputs, things that other people can see, like this video. And as a writer, it's great to have a balance between large projects that take a long time to make and smaller ones that feel that need to feel as though you have accomplished things when you're grappling with projects like novels that are so huge. There was basically no way I was going to finish a novel in 2019. I don't feel bad about not completing that goal because when I look back on all of the other work that I did, it's not as if I was sitting there doing nothing and should have completed that thing and didn't get anything else done. I definitely achieved a lot and I'm very happy with my forward movement last year. Writing wise, I did begin a novel for adults and I also wrote the first 15,000 words of a middle grade novel for kids. And I have had various discussions about those books with editors, etc. So those are projects that I will be carrying forward into 2020. I don't have anything finished to show for it and I'm trying to be okay with that because these are huge things and they take a long time and I know that on one level I had just tried to kid myself that writing a novel along with everything else was definitely something that I could do by the time Christmas rolled around. No. So as well as starting those books in 2019 I also wrote a new picture book which I'm hoping will be released maybe in 2021, I'll tell you more about that later, and have pitched for another book as well, which I'll be able to talk about at some point. I do have three books coming out in 2020 that I have contributed to, not that I have solely written. There is a short story anthology coming out of which I am English. I am one of the authors who has written a short story to go in that anthology. There we go. I've also contributed to a book, a non-fiction book, which I'll talk about at some point when it's out, and a poetry collection as well, a poetry anthology that I have contributed to. Speaking of progress and not having a complete thing that you can show, but still moving forward, 2019 was the year that I started to go to psychotherapy. It's a very difficult thing to talk about. I'm not gonna talk about the ins and outs of it because it's such a personal thing, but I do want to touch on it and aspects of it because I do think it's important to normalize these things as well. I have made videos where I've spoken about anxiety and intrusive thoughts and a video on how I try to feel less anxious, which I'll link down below. I'm trying to find a middle ground on how to talk about this. So please bear with me if this doesn't sound um, like a finished, polished thing. These are my thoughts and um, I wanted to share them when thinking about 2019 because I think it was a really big part of my year. As you know, I have a complicated um, health condition which meant I spent a lot of time in hospital as a child. I have a lot of trauma tied up in that. I have complicated health stuff going forward and a lot of anxiety tied up in all of those things. As well as seeing lots of different doctors for all of the many things that are wrong with me, I have a doctor at the rare diseases clinic who kind of coordinates these things which is never something that I had before but something that I've had in recent years and has been uh, really valuable actually um and she said to me have you ever had therapy offered to you to talk about all of the things that you have been through uh, and are going through and I laughed and said no I'm okay because that's what I do <laughs> um and she said okay but we have somebody on site for these specific reasons to do with rare illnesses and diseases and chronic health conditions if you would like to talk to them. And I said, okay, thank you, I'll think about it. And I did think about it and then I decided, you know what, maybe that would be a good thing. So I went along to see her and we had a session in the summer 
um, an overview session where she talked to me and then she said she would decide whether or not she thought I needed to go and see her and have psychotherapy. So we had this initial session and I said to her, so how did that go? What do you think? Do I need to come and see you? And she said, I would like you to come and see me once a week for the next 18 months. And I panicked. And I mainly panicked because I thought, my initial thought was, I don't have time to do this. I don't have time to take away from my work and my projects to come and do this once a week. I just, I couldn't fathom how I would possibly do that or justify doing that. Um, and I also wanna say, I know that I am extremely lucky to be able to go and do this on the NHS. I mean, lucky is all relative when we're talking about things like this. There's a reason that I'm going, but I, I do, I'm, I completely understand that I'm very lucky to be able to go and have access to this service. Um, and initially when she said that, I said, I can't do that. <laughs> I can't, I can't do that. Um, and she said, okay, uh, well, start going, start coming to see me and we'll, we'll see how we get on. And from going there, and now I've been going for six months. It, I feel like 2019 has been a year of reprogramming, not myself, but my reaction to things, um, to try and stop panicking about things. Like at the beginning of 2019, thinking I don't have a book coming out in 2020. Oh my God, that means I'm failing. And pushing myself so, hard so that I am outputting as many things as possible and working as hard as I possibly can at the expense of pretty much everything else. It's really admirable to take pride in your work and to work hard. It's not admirable to think that that's all that you're worth. And I hadn't realized how damaging that had been and that had been the way I'd been approaching things for quite, quite a long time. And that's rooted in so many different things and also panicking that I don't have time to do things, which was why I had that reaction when I went along and she said you needed to come for 18 months. Not thinking that I have time to do anything, you know, being told that there's a chance I can lose my sight in the next, well now it's eight years and not knowing how that's gonna progress, not knowing when I'm gonna need a new operation, when a new non-cancerous tumor is gonna appear, how my arthritis is going to go, what other new health thing is gonna crop up. It used to be all old things that I thought I understood, then my hair started to fall out. And it's just that feeling out of control of my body has meant I've tried to control every aspect of my life. And anxiety has been a coping mechanism in that respect, but it's such a short term one because if you don't deal with the root cause of why you feel the need to try and control things and you just try and control the things you can control, when those things go out of control, you completely fall apart because as I said, you haven't dealt with the root cause. So 2019 has been trying to honor the process of doing things rather than the results at the end. And that's both in my work, though I have finished things and accomplished things and I'm very proud of myself, but I think I'm more proud of myself for the steps that I have taken to look forward and think about the things I haven't really wanted to think about. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop now before I get really emotional. Let's move on to some favorite things, shall we? Let's talk about favorite things. Um, my favorite book of 2019 was Lanny by Max Porter. Shock, surprise, I made a video where I talked about my favorite books of the year, which I will link in the description box down below. I read so many great books in 2019, but Lanny was definitely my favorite. My favorite film was a film called The Kindergarten Teacher, which starred Maggie Gyllenhaal. It was on Netflix in the States. I don't think it is in the UK, but you can get it on iTunes. It is about a kindergarten teacher who wants to be a poet, but she's not very good at poetry. And then a five-year-old in her class starts reciting poetry that he has just made up. And she starts passing off his work as hers. The poetry in it was written by Ocean Vong and Kavar Akbar. I forgot there for a second. And I loved it for so many different reasons. It's a little bit like Notes on a Scandal, not in plot, but in the feel that you get from it. It's so 
tense and beautifully shot, wonderful. Go and check it out if you haven't seen it already. My favourite television show, there were lots of great ones. I loved Killing Eve. Um, I really loved Fleabag. I adored Stranger Things the third season and Rick and Morty. The newest season of Rick and Morty has been excellent, especially the one about a heist. If you haven't seen Rick and Morty, it's really difficult to explain. Maybe just look it up, see an episode. If it's gonna be your cup of tea, it will be your cup of tea. It's a very Marmite type of program, but I just think the script, the script writing is, it blows my mind. So go and check it out if you haven't watched it already. I'm sure you probably have watched it. But if you haven't, it's a treat for you. I have to give an honourable mention to RuPaul's Drag Race. We watched all of RuPaul's Drag Race in 2019, all of it, and I don't regret a thing. What an excellent show. My favourite thing that I saw on stage was Grief is a Thing with Feathers starring Killian Murphy. That book is incredible. That show, it is nearly a one-man show. There are two children in it. They have very few lines, but Killian plays both the dad and Crow. He has a mic that's a little bit like uh, Bane's mic in Dark Knight Rises. And so some of the time he's playing one character and when he's speaking into the mic, he's playing Crow. I never really thought about Crow being terrifying. I thought of him being cheeky and sarcastic and horrible and mean. I never thought about him being scary, but Killian made him really scary. It was on at the Barbican and if it ever tours again, you should go and see it because I kind of don't have the words for how brilliant it is. My favourite discovery was Muddy Buddy Period Pants. They have, this is no exaggeration, changed my life. My favourite YouTube discovery of 2019 was Makira Tours and I have Jean to thank for this. She told me about her. Makira is a joy. She is like old school YouTube. She creates dresses out of everything. One time she made a suit from an old sofa that she found on the street. She looks a bit like Rachel McAdams and she also did a video where she dressed up as all Rachel McAdams film characters. They're not instruction videos on how to make a dress, they're just really funny and I am in awe of her skill. My favourite board game of 2019 was Quacks of Quedlinburg, which is a recent purchase for us. We purchased it at near Christmas and it's so much fun. I will talk about it in more detail in my favourite board games video, which I will film soon. But essentially it is a potions game where you each have a cauldron and you have to make your own potion each round. The more ingredients you put in, the more points you get, but if you put in the wrong combination of ingredients, your pot will explode and you will not get any money to buy ingredients for the next round. The cauldrons, you can play between two and four people, come in red, green, blue, and yellow. So naturally, I pretend that they are house colors and that I am in a potions class. The potions ingredients are also things like mandrake root and ghost breath. So you can definitely pretend it's Harry Potter related, even though it isn't. So that's the end of this video. It was probably quite a long video, I'm sorry. If you made it to the end, thank you very much. I would love to know how your year was in the comments section down below. What you got up to, what you achieved, things you've progressed with, and any lessons that you have learned in 2019, along with your favorite things. Please do share them in the comments section below, and I will be back next week to talk about my goals for 2020. Lots of love. Bye.